about uh, MMOs real bad. Um, don't get me wrong, I, I love my MMOs, I've been playing them for years, but I'm beginning to think that all this intentional design towards casual gaming can be a bad thing for the genre. Um, and don't get me wrong, I don't think that they should be made less accessible. I think that, that opening them up so that everyone can play them and make them easy to understand is a great thing. But, um, remember back the beginning of Vanilla WoW, uh, trying to get a group together to run an instance. Took some planning took some, you know, took, uh, took a group, took, generally took a guild or a combination of guilds to get things together, and it made things specific. It made things more uh, intimate. You had friends that you ran with, and if you had good friends, you ran together for a long time. You wound up making people, you wound up meeting, fr meeting people and making friends that actually meant something to you, rather than just running through these instances that are just put together with a bunch of random people that you'll never see again, and it it gave a whole different flavor to the game. Uh, being able to run through with people, with random people, to get some stuff to to kind of if you augment what you can with your with your guild is a good idea i i like especially the five man instances great thing for building up gear and everything else but i don't think that and i mean even maybe 10 man raids should be very very accessible i don't have problems with people being able to even run the higher level raids with groups but there should either be bonuses for running it the hard way, the normal way, or you shouldn't be able to get necessarily all the, the I'll put it this way, let me back up a bit. When I first started running, uh, uh, wow, I really didn't start raiding until Karzan, and the first time I ran through Karzan, we spent four hours trying to kill Moroz, and we did horribly. I had a bad group, nobody knew what the hell they were doing. I had never run it before. I, I mean, it didn't take me that long to start figuring out, well, this isn't a great idea. But it, um, you know, it was, it was a mess. And the next time I ran through it was with a group who had actually mostly run it before. Most of the guys were geared, most of them knew what they were doing. I was one of, I think, two people who really weren't geared in that group. And it felt really good to be able to learn what was going on. Um, to be able to figure out the fights, to be able to earn the gear that I got. And, you know, it was... There was a sense of pride in what I'd done. There was, there was a sense of accomplishment. There was a reason to keep going. And there was a, you know, are we coming back and doing this again next week? The answer was inevitably, hell yes. And now it's just kind of, uh, are we going to run raids next week? Meh. You know, I mean, we've done this 5,000 times before. Um, you know, most of the raids, in, in while at least from what I'd seen, especially with Kata and, um, and the Wrath of the Lich King, a lot of them were recycled. Um, don't get me wrong, I like bringing back old content and making it viable and making it, uh, you know, good for a next run, but that doesn't necessarily mean that you should completely get rid of the old stuff. Or that it should, I mean, you should have new, it should augment the, the new instances and not be your new primary raid for a while. And, and that's really what Nax was. Now, unfortunately, I hadn't run Nax when it was, um, when it was old school. So, I, it was all new to me. And I don't know how different the quests, or the, the, not the quests, rather, the boss fights and, and the setup and the layout and everything. I'm assuming it was different, but I'm also assuming that it did have, uh, kind of a, you know, an old school feel to it still. It still had... You know, well, we've been here, we've done this, we're kind of retreading old territory. 
and that can that can kind of take the wind out of someone um i i love the idea of adding in new options for uh for new characters that aren't necessarily completely raid designed um i think the idea of being able to you know kind of catch them all for the pets and everything as goofy as it is i i kind of i it's a meta game that that I think will benefit um, a lot of people. I think it'll be a fun little side thing for people to do who aren't necessarily into the writing movement. They may be into all the collecting and everything. I also think that, that, that running something like that isn't necessarily the best thing for the game in the long run. When you take away the reason for people, uh, uh, for kind of holding people together, when you take away the glue that keeps a guild together, you you kind of tend to take away a lot of uh, a lot of good things about what the guild was or, or, or a lot of, uh, a lot of good things about the game was uh, it, 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 it's really difficult to recommend running a game that's basically the same game it's been for the last five six years I mean there's they've added lots and lots of new stuff but I mean compare wow to Eve Eve is constantly changing. Now that doesn't mean that there's not a lot of times that I w that I kind of miss some of the old 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 style stuff. I also completely understand that Eve is not for everyone. It is a completely different game. But when you when you compare the two, the biggest difference is is that there uh, is that the the devs for Eve are always playing with something new. They're always playing with something different trying to change the game enough to make it new and different. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff about Eve that's very repetitive, that's very old, and, and the, the mission running and stuff is essentially the same as it was when it first started, but it's, um, they've added new tiers of mission running from, you know, I think it was one and two originally, and it's all the way up to four. They've added entire new classes of bad guys. And this is all just free updates, too. It has nothing to do with um, any kind of paid updates or anything. Um, it's all... It's all... They have a whole bunch of new content. They, they're, they're always trying to get ideas from, from their players and stuff. I don't necessarily think that everybody likes all the changes in Eve. There's a lot of times when a lot of players go, you know, this really, really sucks. And in fact, I think it was within the last year, there was a huge hullabaloo the, about the way certain things about Eve were changed. And the players had a fit. And not in a bad way. They, they, they made it clear in no uncertain terms that this was not acceptable that what the devs were doing was not acceptable to them, that this was not what the game was about, what it never had been about, and what it not should not be about. This wasn't what represented their game. And the, one of the nice things about EVE is, well, you can do anything. Yeah, sure, there's a lot of times when, you know, there's going to be repercussions for it, You can, ki but you can kill people in... Isaac, you can go out of your way to kill anybody, anywhere, anytime. It, you will get, you will get smacked down for it. You'll get killed by what are the Eve Universe versions of the guards, but you can do it. You know, it's not like it's not like you can walk away scot free from it. But um, if you get really upset with something, or if you don't like the way a certain thing works, you can do something about it. And if someone pisses you off, you can do something about it. Um, you know, there have been times when even I've done silly things to Eve where, you know, some annoying little bugger came along and, and, you know, did something to really, really piss me and some of my friends off. And we, I think what we did was we wound up getting a bunch of newbie ships and just going through and, and dying like 50 times or something to this AFK guy. And wound up eventually killing him with the newbie ships. It didn't cost us anything, and he was just sitting there, but he had been spamming chat and just being a general annoyance and a nuisance, and 
you know, that's not something that you can really get away with in other games is like, okay, yeah, this guy's pissing me off, but I can't do anything about it. Well, this guy pissed us off, he ran away, and we figured out where his hiding spot was, and we went and killed him. You know, it, it probably didn't really set him back very much, because it was only a cruiser, but in the long run, it, 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 there was kind of a satisfying, you know what, maybe he'll think twice before he does something stupid the next time. Uh, there's always advantages and disadvantages to this. You're going to have people who take advantage of that. You're going to have people who, you know, well, we don't like mi high-sec miners. Um, but there's also been a rash of uh, uh, high-sec mining operations that are done by bots. People put bounties on these high-sec mining bots' heads. And, yeah, sure, you might die doing it, but just to get all that crap out of the system and, you know, let, give legitimate miners a chance to actually run, um, I think it's gone a little bit too far in, in, in that direction where, you know, anybody who's in high-sec is a target instead of anybody who doesn't respond. If you're just sitting there AFK mining and you're moving around and everything else, you know, it's obvious your ship is being being run by a computer, you, you know, you have a name ABCD135, um, y you know, it's kind of obvious when somebody's, uh, somebody's macro money, but, you know, the point is, is that, you know, you can do something about it, and it wasn't always the case, uh, there's been a lot of adjustments, um, there's what we call jet can mining, you used to, we can mine into, uh, cargo containers that, that any ship can jettison out of, out of them, but that used to be considered something that, that, that the devs and Eve went, yeah, no, you're not allowed to do that, anybody can run, al run along and steal from it. That got, you know, that got complained about to the point where, the devs eventually decided, okay, you know what, these guys, I I it's a legitimate form of mining. Everybody does it. It's not like they're going out of their way to try to piss anyone off. It's not like they're doing anything but minding their own business and trying to make, trying to make some money and actually, you know, using the game's mechanics in ways that we didn't necessarily originally figure on, but they're doing it in ways that, that should be legitimate. So they, ma th you know, they gave, um, um, they actually eventually coded into the game uh, a way that if somebody steals stuff out of your can, you have the right to retaliate. Now, that d it means simply put that in high sec, if someone steals your stuff, you have the right to kill them without any reaction by the local guards. Y you know, fair is, fa fair is fair. If you can catch somebody taking your crap, you can kill them. Okay. But the whole thing is, is that Eve is constantly changing. They're they're always adding new things. They're always adding new features. They're always adding new ships. Not always for the best, but they are always experimenting. They are always trying new things that that aren't necessarily the first thing that you may think of. They've completely changed their UI probably half a dozen times. They have changed um, a lot of a lot of the graphics. I mean, they, they've redone the graphics and are actually in the midst of redoing the graphics again. Uh, like three, two, three times, something like that. They have massively upgraded everything that they've done over the course of how long. And I commend them for it. I don't always agree with their decisions, but I commend them for the fact that they, they are trying new things they are trying to keep the game fresh. They are trying to keep the game relevant. And the problem with WoW is that it is essentially, let's take a cookie cutter of the game that we have had for the last 10 years, re-cookie cutter it, add a new area with new gear that lets you level up a little bit more and get, you know, more of the same. And it's like, the way my sister put it was, okay, so you're going to go around and kill the newest, biggest, baddest monster and, and get yourself all set up and you, and you got to the point to where you have the best gear in the game and then you're done playing and you get to wait a year to start all over again because that's about how long it takes for the next expansion to come out. And, I mean, she plays the game for completely different reasons. She She's a hunter, she loves to go... Uh, find rare monsters and stuff like that. And she primarily plays alone. 
And and she loves to collect, you know, the newest monsters that she can for her hunter. And that is that is what I'm talking about when I say that, you know, I, I think that it is good that there are other kinds of meta games that, that different people can enjoy. But the problem is is that anybody who hasn't been able to raid, or there's a lot of people who haven't had the time or the ability to raid. And they have come in and said, you know what, we can't we want we want the same bonuses and the same benefits as as raiders. Is that really fair? Is it really fair to give basically give gear to people who don't really want to earn it? I mean you can find a good raid group and only go a couple of hours once a week. Now chances are if you if you play this game on a fairly regular basis, you're probably playing for at least a couple of hours. And, I mean, a couple of hours once a week is not a huge investment. Now, yeah, I have, uh, I'll admit that I have gotten to, I have gotten to points where I have played, I have run raids like 10 hours twice a week, and that wore on me. That was too much, and I, I eventually got to the point where I didn't want to, I didn't want to keep raiding. I had to give myself a bit of a break because it was too much. But there's also the other side of it of, you know, there should be benefits for running through and finding these groups and making friends and, and, and actually putting forward a heck of an effort to, uh, to, to beat this game. I, I remember I, I had the wind knock out of me with Cataclysm not because of not being able to kill a boss, but because of all the difficulty that I'd gone through and the hours that I put in to run through Karazhan to get to to, to the next um, the next level and run and get and grab the uh, the troll raids and stuff like that with uh, the Burning Crusade and then with the Lich King even um, running through Nax and then Ulduar and then getting yourself geared up for the Lich King and actually running through all these instances and getting to the point where you can actually do these fights and beat the final boss of the game and it took a hell of a lot of effort and then there was cataclysm um God, i can't even remember the instances i mean i know uh, i know there were a couple of higher level five mans after the troll after the trolls were redone the redone as instances uh, I can't remember the names of the five mans. I know there was uh, there were some specific characters in them. I ran them a dozen times each, and very very quickly. And I wound up getting all my gear right away. And you know, I got to a point really quickly where I was running the the pug raid, and I went through, grabbed the pug raid, and got a bunch of shit really really quickly. And we beat the we beat the final boss, and it was like, okay, that's it. You know, I get a cutscene for running this pug raid that took 45 minutes to go through the entire raid. It wasn't even difficult, and I, I mean, we get the we get the end boss. We get yeah. Now, granted, the tier level of the gear isn't quite as strong as what you need as what you can get out of running it normally with a group, but. That's really kind of uh, irrelevant. I mean, to have uh, to have slightly less less good gear, y it's still plenty good to run anything else that you might need to run solo. Uh, it's still plenty good to get. It, it, and I'm not saying that there shouldn't be some kind of tier gear like that for for pug raids. You know, give a couple of good pug raids just for pug raids for people who who want to do one of two things. Now, yes, give them storylines. You know, I'm not against giving them rewards. But I am saying that there should be... There should be something special about actually running through and getting a good raid together and doing it yourself. I understand that there are... Um, you know, there's hard mode and everything else. But by the time you've run it a thousand times to get the gear to run it normal with your group and then to get the gear to run it a hard mode by that point you just went th there was really not any point I've seen this I've seen this stuff a hundred times I've beaten this boss 
I don't know how many times. There's nothing different. There's nothing new. There's nothing special. You add, um, you know, you add timing to it. You add some extra special attacks and stuff like that. I, it, yes, it is much harder. I am not saying that it is not, not more difficult to run. But I am saying that I feel that the final boss of the game, or at least for that expansion, should not be something that is killed so lightly. Uh, you know, th this run is not something that should be done and taken on so easily. And there should still be a way to develop that sense and that group camaraderie. Because I think keeping those people together, keeping your groups together, keeping friends together, that's what this game started as. And it may not have been the intended point of the game, but that that's really kind of what it developed. It developed the same way as, I mean, I hate to say it, but it, it did kind of, uh, for an online version of what Dungeons and Dragons used to do. You know, you'd meet with your friends once a week and you'd be able to hang out with them. Only now, you know, instead of being just from, uh, you know, the local wherever, you had a bunch of people from all over the country that you went and played with. Uh, I it's, it's the same kind of thing. You had this dungeon that you went through and you finally got through it and you felt good about what you did. And it really felt like an accomplishment. And now... I really do think that they have done the, these games and these universes a disservice. I think there is more to it. I think it could be done better. I do not think that um, be opening yourselves up to casual players is a bad thing. But I do think that there should be something for there should be something for the the, the more hardcore players. There should be something more than just an extra tier of gear. There should be something more than just flashy yellow damage that's a little bit bigger than everybody else's. Um, there should be something more. And... I mean, I know it's it's something that people had complained about for so long. And finally got to the point of, okay, well, you know what? We will give in, we will concede. But that concession is really honestly what made me finally quit the game. I haven't... I've played off and on... Uh, for a long time. I'd stopped for like six months or a year and then I went back going, you know what, I missed this game. And then I played for a couple of months and then I stopped again because I, I realized why I why I quit. And I did that a couple of times and eventually I'm just, you know, I have friends who really want me to play. I have friends who really want me to play and I just cannot bring myself to do this. I cannot bring myself to play this game anymore. And I find that to be, uh, I don't, I think it's a disappointment. I really wish that it was, I really wish that it had stayed fresh enough that it was a game that I could still play. Because to be honest with you, it was a good game. It was a very good game. And it was something that I really did enjoy playing at one point. I wish that it, wa that it still is as good as it was. I wish that they were able to come up with a way to keep it fresh that, that made them proud to make it and that made me proud to play it. But I think it's time has moved on. Um, I don't think it's going to go away anytime soon. But I do think it's heyday is over. And I think there are other games that will come along and take their play take its place eventually. Um, Blizzard is actually working on a new new universe, and I've seen a bit of um, what may be concept art. It, it's apparently it's it was somebody it was somebody at Blizzard's doodlings, and nobody's really quite sure if it's it's an actual concept art or not. But if it is, it looks like it could be really interesting, and I think I could I could have some fun learning a new IP and getting into that. I would love to come across another MMO that redefined the genre. Uh, you have a couple of games that are, I mean the newer games do seem to be different. They add a lot of things. Um, I was just messing around with Terra uh, the other day and I I like the feel of it. I like the way, I like the graphical style. I love the fact that every version of every class like every every race every race's version of that class is different. 
a war, uh, a human warrior is completely different looking and feeling, well, not necessarily feeling, but looking at least, than, um, you know, one of the high elven warriors. It, the, it goes from, you know, kind of a samurai to more of a, uh, well, you know, for lack of a better way to put it, uh, an elven uh, feel. There's, uh, to put it this way, there's uh, kind of a demon race that the male everybody makes fun of because it kind of looks like the male uh, the male blood elf from WoW. But he also really kind of looks like Dante from uh, from Devil May Cry. From the original Devil May Cry, not the remake. And he's kind of like, got this blonde hair thing going on and I laughed when I saw him because he looked just like Dante. And then you go from that particular warrior type to a different warrior type that's just, you know, kind of got this samurai feel to it. And, and each different race has uh, their own abilities, like, you know, as in any game. So it, it is something that, that it does feel like there is a sense of uniqueness, at least, to the, the different races. You don't have, you know, your gear doesn't necessarily look the same. Um, now, my best friend was saying something about he doesn't like how uh, gear on one gender lo or looks completely different from gear on another gender. I think this is one of those games, uh, because it's Asian, that, you know, there's male and female versions of most gear, but I could be wrong. Um, but if there isn't a male and female version of most gear, it definitely looks different on, uh, on females than it does on males. It just does. And that's something that, well, yeah. It, 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 but it does give them their own style, and it does look and feel different. But primarily, the gameplay, it, it was made by the same people who made uh, Lineage 2, and primarily the gameplay feels very, very, very similar to Lineage. Um, it was supposed to be a sequel originally to Lineage. It's It's got a little bit more Twitch gaming to it than Lineage had. I will admit that, but it's not completely new and unique. And it's, I don't think that it necessarily, a game doesn't have to be entirely u new and unique to be good. But I do think that the level system has, has outlived its usefulness. And I do think that what Eve does is a better thing. It allows you to, to, to mold your character as you go. Yeah, it takes a long time sometimes, especially at higher levels. But that's kind of to be expected. And y you still have a short track path to certain things that you really want. And, and to make yourself at least somewhat decent doesn't take real long if you know what you're doing in Eve. So, you know, once you've learned your first your first set and you kind of know what you're doing with your battleships and you know how to, how to do a specific type of tanking or whatever, a lot of those skills will transfer over to a new, to a new set type. If you go from, say, Amari into Gallant, uh, all your, your tertiary and secondary weapon skills, like your, you know, anything that might give you faster tracking or whatever that'll help you now it's not a direct damage modifier but it definitely helps and it's something that you've already trained and it it assists you on your way it, it, it's I like the idea behind that and they're always adding new skills so you'll never be able to completely max out your character and it the, the real time thing when you first start playing it you think is really weird and you go oh god no and I actually when I first first played Eve I thought the real time thing was only when you were logged in I was very happy to find out that wasn't the case um, but I think Eve, Eve's skill system works really really well uh, just in the fact that it's designed around keeping things different and allowing you to adjust your character without losing anything you'd already had. Um, you can make a class that, now obviously there would be, like in something like, like wow, you, you'd have to limit which skills could be used with what. Say if you wanted to be a tank class, you'd have a defensive stance or something that would work really, really well with, with being, you know, a defensive tank and such. And that would allow you to take on your defensive skills that you'd already learned and, and, and all that. Uh, you know, have your passives give you different benefits if, uh, depending on the stances you use or something like that. You know, so that e even though the passive may have been learned, it 
um, already. It gives you uh, something different here or there. There's lots of ways to work around something like that so that all the skills that you have gained um, have a use. I'm not saying that they all have every a use for every particular situation because that would be ridiculous. You know, obviously crafting skills are not going to have a use in every fight. You, th having crafting skills affect your health and stuff is amusing and it's great to have some extra health. But then you get to the point to where if it's a good benefit, y before you actually really get into a fight, you gotta go train up your, your crafting. And then if you don't have good crafting, somebody's gonna look at you and go, well, you're not a good crafter, you're not as a, you're inferior to somebody who is, so we don't want you here. You know, th you always have the problem running into that. So I don't necessarily think that something like crafting should benefit combat. I think that crafting skills should complement each other. You know, even if you're not, uh, say you learn, you know, leather crafting or something, and you want to you wanna switch to either cloth craft or metal craft or whatever, they can kind of complement, you know, give you a bonus to not necessarily learning it faster, but, you know, give you a, a better bonus to getting more out of what you do. So if you learn all of them across the board, it'll, uh, you can be, you know, this master crafter who, who does stuff. And that could be the only thing that you really do. You know, get, make crafting an absolutely viable way to play the game. Um, which is what Eve did. It really is an absolutely completely viable way to, to just play the game. You don't even have to go, you don't even have to go into combat if you really don't want to. Eve does not necessarily have to be about the combat. It is designed around combat. It is designed around something like that. And I, I, I keep using Eve mostly because it is the only game that I can really think of that is very unique and different compared to the other games. I am not saying that everything in Eve is superior. God, there's a, a, a thousand different things that frustrate me about that game. But there are a lot of things that are done right. And I am simply using it as a reference to open people's minds to think outside the box. There's a lot of games out there that are done differently. And there's a lot of games that could be used uh, for, uh, you know, there could, there's a lot of games that could be remade or, or redone differently or just look different or, or act different, actually, really, is what, uh, what I'm getting at. There are a thousand different ways to skin a cat. And we've been skinning the sca same cat with the same skinning knife so long that the cat has been reborn and the knife this must be the is knife nothing but a handle. It's ridiculous. I like MMOs. I like what they give the players the opportunity to, to do. I like that they give you the social aspects. Especially for somebody who may not necessarily be terribly social outside of that. Um... I don't think that it should be used as a crutch, but, you know, if you're busy or whatever and, y and you have some time and you can make some friends online, it's a great place to be. It can be, I think it can be very therapeutic and I think it can be good for people. But I also think that there's a time, there comes a time when things need to change. There comes a time when people really need to look at what they're doing and how they're doing it and say, you know what? This was really good, but so, uh, I there are inherent flaws to it, and maybe we should change it. I, I don't think that the skill system in EVE could, uh, could be used to translate to WoW. Not now. Not for with as long as it's been around, you can't adjust that. But they keep removing talent points in an attempt to make everything balance out and make, you know, no superior choice to another one. And you get to the point where you're looking at it and you go, well, there's no talents that are worth having. There's nothing here that, that's actually unique and fun about the talent skill and uh, the talent point system anymore. They're all the same thing across all of the different styles. And really, it's kind of frustrating. It's frustrating to see the game limit itself that badly. And I don't want to see a good game die just because... So, uh, people are too afraid to think outside the box. Sometimes the way forward is through is through a path that really will never allow you to go back. 
And I think WoW is trying to keep the essence of what it was. And it's past that. It's it's past that. It's time to grow up. It's time to let it mature into something into something that it really can be. You know, take risks with an IP that's been around for a while. You had to to begin with. Do it again. I'm sure that there are plenty of people who are smarter than me who can come up with good ways to, to adjust things, you know? Maybe even come up with a remort system. I know, I know, I know. That's a horrible idea. Uh, oh, and I do understand that the legacies were kind of their attempt at remorts and such. Um, but... But... You know... Uh, get uh, get a fifth remorp and you know maybe maybe even like a dual class by that point and kind of you know even have the death knights be a, a combination of a warlock and uh uh instead of you know a new class at le that you start at level 50 have them start over and be a combination of a warlock and a warrior you know have it go through and you have to remort and start over and actually run through both classes and get that up. I, again, I understand that you can't do that with current content, but I think that it's something that, that they should look into, that they should look into maturing the IP instead of just trying to keep it what it was. Keeping something what it is, keeping something what it used to be is a great way to stagnate. And finding a way to be new and inventive and uh, innovative and and really breathing life back into a game that I really truly love is something that I greatly look forward to. I really hope that somebody can come up with a way to talk to the, the, the guys who, who head Blizzard and say, look, you and I both know that it's kind of going downhill. We've got an IP that's been around forever. You know, we need to update the graphics, and I mean a serious overhaul of them. Not just keep the same, yeah, keep the same cartoony style, but completely overhaul them. I I think at first people might be a little a little bit freaked to see their characters changed a little bit, but if you do it right, you can also ensure that those characters are still capable of looking like they used to. Um, and, and without, you know, you can still keep the same essence of what made that character that character, and you can still give the, the whole thing an overhaul to make it look better. Uh, y y there's all kinds of things that you can do, and yes, it's hard work, but I mean, come on, tell me that game isn't worth it. Tell me the, the, the millions of dollars a year or a month that that game makes them isn't worth the hard work of keeping it up to date and new and overhauled. It's probably one of the few things that makes a hell of a lot of money right now in this economy. You know, it's really worth it. That game deserves better. Yes, it means you're going to have a lot of hard work ahead of you. Yes, it means fighting for something that may wind up not doing very well and you may have to change it again but in the end you know isn't it worth it to to see something that you really really did once love be brought back to life be pulled uh, pulled over and started over again and actually get new life breathed into you know bring something that was once great back to that greatness I really did love that game. And I'm not comparing it to Eve because I want it to turn into Eve. I don't think that it would be good as Eve. I'm comparing it to Eve because I I like the fact that the the guys at Eve aren't afraid to try something new. If it doesn't work, they'll they're willing to admit that and they'll go back to the drawing board and start over and try something else. Not everybody agrees with everything that they do. But they go out of their way to try to keep their game the best that they can make it. And that's what I want to see for WoW. 
That's what I want to see for any good MMO. I want to see these games come back to life. There are so many good quests. And hopefully you do too. Anyway, I think I've ranted enough about this. I'm going to let you guys go and enjoy the rest of your day.